I recently ran a workshop at the Hong Kong Moodle Moot uh, in 2012, um, and I presented something about the workshop module in Moodle. Um, the workshop module is a peer and self-assessment activity, um, and according to the University of New South Wales, uh, peer, peer assessment is very good because the agreed marking criteria means that there can be little confusion about assignment outcomes and expectations. There is more involvement uh, from the student. It encourages students to reflect on their role and contribution to the process of the group work. Um, it also gives them more relevant feedback on to, for a particular task because it's generated by their peers in a language that they understand. And students are aware that their contribution will be graded by their peers and perhaps they will try and work harder. I tend to agree with uh, those statements from the University of New South Wales because I have witnessed it in my lessons. So in this, um, in this session, I'm going to show you what the workshop module actually is about. So the workshop module is a peer and self-assessment task. It's not used a great deal, and it does take a little, t a little time to get used to it, I have to agree. And um, I, would, I would advise you to do a couple of test runs with what I would call non-exam groups, where you can spare perhaps a little bit more time, uh, a, little bit a little bit more curriculum time. One thing that is very important to, to know is that the key to success for this activity is the set of criteria. Now, the set of criteria is entered into the system by the teacher, but it doesn't mean particularly that it has to be done by the teacher. And a bit more on that in a few minutes. The work can be assessed as a self-assessment activity or as a peer assessment activity, and also it can be marked by the teacher. Now, the beauty of this module, when you've used it a few times, is that peer assessment can be done outside of lesson time. Now, we don't always have time to sort of spare for peer and self-assessment, and sometimes it, well, we don't really do it. With this particular module, you can now get your students to do it at home, and that is very, very valuable homework. So let's take a look at the workflow. Now, the workshop is a five-stage activity. And it, it is different to other mo mo um, Moodle activities in the sense that it is something that you have to actively, actively look after. When one stage is on, the others aren't. The first stage that you presented with as a, as a teacher is the setup stage. Now, this is the stage where you have lots and lots of options, and only, teacher, only the teacher can access this stage. The students will be able to see that they, there is a workshop activity, but when they click on the link, it will just tell them that the activity is not yet, yet accessible to them. This is where the, the assessment criteria is defined. A little bit more on this in a minute. The teacher should switch manually from one stage to the next. It is possible for in Moodle 2.3 uh, and, um, and above to actually have some of the stages to switch automatically, but I would recommend you against it, especially in a high school setting. For example, it is possible to switch between the submission and the assessment phase automatically, but if not all students have submitted their work, it can be a bit of a problem. So I would advise you to do it, or, um, to do it manually. The submission phase is when the students upload their work. Then you move on to the assessment phase, which is the heart of this activity. This is what makes this activity special. This is where the self-assessment happens. This is where the peer assessment happens or the teacher assessment. Now, when all the work has been submitted in a previous phase by the students, as a teacher, you have the ability to do the allocation of peer, peer assessment automatically. So say you want each student to uh, assess three different pieces of work, four or five or whatever, then that can be done automatically. It will pair students automatically, or you could do it manually as well.
When all the assessment has been done, you then move on to the grading phase. This is where the software calculates the grades. It is important to know that the students do not actually award a grade as such. The computer, the Moodle Artificial Intelligence, actually does it for them. As a teacher, you have the ability to review all of the grades and you have the ability to override a grade or to change their weight, change their weighting. Once all the grading has been done, which is basically just the press of a button, you move on to the closed phase. Now, during the grading, the students cannot access the, uh, the workshop again. They can access it during the closed section or the closed phase, which is when the grades are pushed into the gradebook. This is when the students can actually see what other students have written about their own, their own submission, their own work. It is important to know that you can always go back a few stages if you need to, make changes and then go further again. Let's take a look at the setup phase and more particularly the assessment criteria. I'm not here to teach you how to actually create a workshop. I want you to understand how to create a workshop well. Now the list of criteria is entered prior to the activity, prior to the activity starting. It is Vital, it must be prepared in advance. This is the key to the success of the activity. Although the list is entered by the teacher, it can be decided as a class. I usually have discussions with my students so that they were in charge of deciding the criteria together. And that's very good because it makes the, cri it makes the criteria understandable by students. It is in a language that they understand. They've produced that one. Now, it's also very important to break down the criteria in very small chunks that can be answered by yes or no, by numbers, or by a rating, a simple rating. Don't make the criteria difficult. For example, if you want uh, to do something about computer technology in the MYP, and there's something about the design specification, you could break it down and say how many items were in the design specification, make it out of 10, and then the students can do that easily. Now, like I said, have a discussion with your students. It always helps. The submission phase is when the students upload their work. They can either upload a, work, um, a file or they can just write text in the, in, in the online editor. Now, the online editor is useful, if uh, you use an iPad, for example, because you can't upload files. Once all of the papers have been uploaded, then the, student, the teacher can manually allocate papers to be graded by other students, or it can just be done randomly. If you do it randomly, or even manually for that matter, the number of assessments should always be odd, never even, for the way that um, Moodle marks papers so that you can avoid any confusion. Um, you don't really have to worry about why, but always try and make it odd. It makes it easier for the market. The assessment phase. This is what this activity is all about. This is what the workshop module is all about. This is where the peer assessment is going to take place. This is where the self-assessment is going to take place. So let's take a look at the possibilities that students and teachers have. So, for example, we have uh, Carla in the blue, we have David in the middle, and we have Lisa in the red. The first thing that students can do, if you've set up the options that way, is to mark, um, to assess an example. So you have created an example during the setup phase, you have uploaded it, and you have marked it. Now, the first thing students do if you choose for them to do so, is to assess the same example. This is useful because if they have any questions, um, they can ask you um, when they're doing the example rather than doing it on live data. And also, they can, when they've done that, they can compare their assessment with yours. And again, if any particular problems or any questions arise, then they can ask you then rather than on live data. So that's the first thing. That's an option. The second thing is they can do their self-assessment. So Carla marks her own work, David marks his own work, and Lisa marks her own work. That's an option. They don't have to, depending on how you set it up. The second one is the peer assessment. So Carla marks David's and Lisa's work, David marks Carla's and Lisa's work, and Lisa marks Carla's and David's work. 
The next, the next option is for you as a teacher to mark the student's work. You don't have to, but you can. So in all, these are all of the different options that you have when it comes to assessment using the workshop module. It looks like complicated, but in reality, it isn't really. It's just self and peer assessment, teacher assessment, and example assessment as well. Once the, all, all the assessments have been done, so all the papers have been marked, we go into the grading phase. Each student will be provided with two different grades. A grade for submission, which basically takes a look at how it judges the quality of the work that they submitted, and a grade for assessment, which judges the quality of their assessment, basically how spot on their marking was. I like to set each grade to 50, so that when I add them, add them up, they're out of 100, but that's entirely up to you as a teacher, how many grades for each part you give. Let's start with the grades for submission. So we've got Lisa, David, and Carla. They've all uploaded their submission, and it has been marked by the other students. So for example, Lisa's work was marked by Carla, David, and the teacher, and so on. Now each of those will award them, will award each student a mark. So for example, for Lisa on the left, she received 40 from her teacher, 50 from Carla, and 45 from David. Now, those people did not actually award a grade as such. What they did is they looked at a series of criteria and answered questions like yes or no, or they gave a, a number uh, as an answer, or they rated out of five stars, for example. And what Moodle does is it computes all of those criteria together and then gave, gives a mark out of 50 because I decided for that mark to be out of 50. What then happens is Moodle Artificial Intelligence calculates a weighted mean of all of those assessments for each student. For example, Lisa on the left got 40 from her teacher, 50 from Carla, and 45 from David. All of those assessments had a weight of one, so that means they were all as important as one another, which then gives a mark of 45. If, for example, the teacher decided to give their assessment a weight of, say, 10, for example, that means that that grade was 10 times as important as the other grades, therefore, Lisa would have had a lower grade because the teacher awarded a grade that is below the grade she currently has, which is 45. Now you can take a look at the other two students. Okay. Once the grade for submission has been calculated, so here we've got 45 out of 50 for Lisa, that's pretty good, 32 out of 50 for David, and 36 out of 50 for Carla. Once those grades have been awarded, we move on to the grade for assessment, which judges, which judges sorry, how spot on their marking was. So here we've got submissions from three students, Lisa, David and Carla. Lisa marked David and Carla's work. David marked Lisa's and Carla's work. Carla marked Lisa's and David's work and the teacher marked all of the work. So we can see on the left column that Lisa has three assessments for a submission. David in the middle has three assessments for a submission and the same for Carla to the right. Now, what Moodle does is for each submission, so keep looking at the red column for Lisa, it looks at each assessment, each criteria, and it determines which assessment is the most spot on. So what I'm going to say now is a simplified version of the truth, but it will help you understand what actually happens in the grading system. What Moodle does is it takes an average of all of the assessments for a particular student and looks at what paper is closest to the average. In real life, it's a little bit more complicated than that, but that's what sort of happens. So, for example, for Lisa's submission, the teacher's assessment was the closest to the average. Therefore, it's considered the top or the star assessment for her submission. In David, for David's submission, Carla's assessment was 
the, the star submission. And for Carla's, for Carla's submission, David's assessment was the star submission, or closest to the average of all assessments for that particular submission. You will notice on the bottom column that Lisa's assessments have never been counted as being the star assessment. So what happens then is Moodle works out a deviation from the star assessment. For example, if you look at Lisa's submission in the left column, you've got Carla's assessment. She was four marks over the teacher's assessment and David was seven marks under the teacher's assessment. If you keep taking a look at the, at the table, you will notice that each student, so take a look at the rows, is awarded a grade for their assessment. For example, Lisa, she was quite far off the star assessment for both David's submission and Carla's submission, therefore she was awarded a fairly low grade. Now the maths behind this is, is wrong here, but it gives you an idea. Like I said, it is a simplified version of the truth. So we can see that here, Lisa got 25, uh, sorry, 28 out of 50 for her grade for assessment. David got 33 out of 50 and um, Carla got 36 out of 50. So all students will be given grades, will be awarded grades. For example, Lisa got a 45 for a submission and 28 for her assessment. So all together, if I mark it out of 100, I like to put things into a category. So those two grades into a category, she would have 30, sorry, 73 out of 100. So this is how the grading actually happens. To you, actually, in real life, it doesn't really matter because all you do is to press the grading phase and then Moodle does the rest. It just calculates it for you. Once this is done, you move on to the closed phase. Now this is when the grades are actually pushed into the gradebook and the students have access to those grades and they also have access to the assessments that other people have done. So Lisa, she can see the assessment that a teacher did, that David did and that Carla did and she's pretty happy about it. Same for Carla but David is not so happy with his assessment, but at least they have access to all of the details for each assessment. So Lisa can see in detail what the teacher awarded her, why he or she awarded those marks, uh, reading the comments, and the same with for the other two assessments. So students end up with very detailed assessments for their submission. Once the closed phase is done, it is, uh, the, the actual activity is over, the actual activity is over, and it's time um, for students to take a look at it. Now, during the workshop, I was allowed uh, some, some question time. Unfortunately, I can't do that online. Please use the comments section uh, at the bottom of the blog. If you've accessed this through YouTube, please take a look at the description of the video in which you can see the address to my blog. One of the questions was during the workshop, can I make those uh, workshops anonymous, as in the peer assessment being anonymous? Yes, it is possible to do so using the roles and permissions. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you've got questions, please write in the comments.